On this week's Carry Wrap, we speak with Market Force Information to discuss its recent consumer survey that found T Mobile as a favorite full service wireless carrier in the country. Right, well, thanks for joining us on this week's Carrier Wrap. Uh, I'm your host, Dan Meyer, Editor-in-Chief at RCR Wireless News. And uh, this week, we're joined by Cheryl Flink, who's the uh, Chief Strategy Officer for Market Force Information, to talk a bit about uh, a recent report that came out from the company. So, uh, Cheryl, thanks for joining us this week. We, uh, we appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. Good deal. Let me just start with those who don't know much about uh, your company. Maybe a little overview uh, of Market Force, maybe where you guys uh, are based, what you guys do, kind of what your, what your focus is in terms of the telecom space. Absolutely love to. So we are actually a global company. We have headquarters here in beautiful Colorado, and then we have offices in Canada, the UK, uh, North Cross, Georgia, and in Albany. And really what we do is we work with multi-location businesses to help them do three things. Make sure that they're adhering to brand standards, so they're operationally excellent, that they are delighting their customers with the service, the products, the value they provide, and they're making money. And so we work across that equation to collect data, whether it's mystery shopping, customer surveys, we have a big technology platform to integrate data, and then we help connect the dots between the level of effort brands put in to making their brands great and how much money they make. Got it. And obviously, within the telecom space, I think we, uh, uh, we've been covering here for quite some time, and we know that the telecom operators, especially the mobile operators, have a, a bit of a, uh, a ragged history in terms of uh, pleasing their customers. So I'm sure uh, you guys, uh, I'm sure, get a, see a lot of interesting information from that space. I know you recently came out with a, with a new report looking at the telecom space. Uh, I guess can you give a little overview of what, what that was about and kind of some of the insight uh, into the methodology that went into that, uh, that survey? Sure. So we have a panel of about 300,000 consumers and we go out to them and we will ask them to tell us about their experiences with various um, brands and various industries. This new wireless research went out to our consumer panelists and we asked them, what is your experience with your wireless provider? Okay. So they're telling us about what they recommend, would, how satisfied were they with the last interaction they had in that wireless provider store. So we're specifically focused there. We're asking them whether they would recommend the brand. And then we're asking them questions about what drives satisfaction in that store. And we competitively benchmark the brands on what we call the composite loyalty index. That is a composition of the um, ratings on loyalty. So whether they would recommend the brand and their satisfaction in the store. Got it. Okay. And then obviously, uh, the, as the survey came out, uh, I think we, if you looked at the results of it, and if you look at the survey, I know we talked a little while ago, but some of the survey uh, results in the story itself, but uh, it's, it's quite extensive, the number, you know, the numbers that came out of the report. And obviously, uh, T-Mobile came out, I think, as the number one operator in terms of the postpaid full service operators, I think, followed by Verizon, uh, at and and Sprint. Uh, I guess, were there any sort of, you know, maybe surprises or any sort of reaction that you guys noticed? Uh, from consumers in terms of their interactions with those, uh, I guess, on the postpaid full service side of the, of the operator spectrum? Sure. I think there's a couple things that we should really look at. Those full service providers, there are four. And all four of them are very, very competitive. But T-Mobile came out on top. And what I noticed here, we noticed in the research for the UK, and we noticed in the um, contract brands, is that the loyalty ratings are much higher for those who are allowing a non-contract service. So T-Mobile has introduced that. I think you will see moves by the other providers to go the same direction. And those that are out in front, like a cricket, a consumer cellular, they are getting really, really high um, satisfaction and loyalty ratings from customers. They want the flexibility. They want the ability to buy exactly what they need. They don't want to be locked in contracts. They want to get the phone they want. And so you're seeing that show up in um, their loyalty and their likelihood to switch. It's a but, definite. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing because it does seem like operators, uh, I think operators, I think know that consumers do want that kind of flexibility. And, and again, some of them have been a little more aggressive uh, in offering uh, non-contract services, like you said, T-Mobile and Sprint does as well. Uh, but it does seem like a lot of the times those operators treat those non-contract customers as sometimes as, as not necessarily second class citizens, uh, but they're they given the full uh, breadth of perhaps services or network operations 
as, as the contract customers do, yet those customers are, like, like your, your, your survey showed, uh, some of the most loyal customers and seem the most pleased with how those operators are, are, are treating them, which is interesting that dynamic and how that all kind of plays out in the marketplace. Absolutely. And I don't think, you know, I think the non-contract people, they may be viewed as not having as deep of a pocket. So they don't get as many data services, they don't get as many accessories, and so the salesperson in a full service model may pick that up and spend less time. And if you look at the research, that sales associate is absolutely critical to everything that happens in the store. Um, the big wireless companies and even the, um, the smaller ones like the consumer cellulars, et cetera, put a lot of money into training. And what they want is that those sales associates will convert those customers, whether they come in to buy a contract, a phone, they're looking for an accessory, they want them to make that experience happen. And it's really interesting in this data, we can see that if the sales associate is great, there is a higher conversion rate for sales as reported by the customer. They buy what the salesperson recommends. And so if that person is treating them as, I shouldn't spend time with you, I shouldn't bother with you, guess what? You lose the sale. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy for sure. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, and I, th I think a lot of the things too is a lot of the prepaid brands offer their services at, at kind of big box retailers, for instance. And a lot of those things you can pretty much just buy right off the shelf. You don't have to even really talk to anybody for the most part. You can just kind of pick it off the shelf, go pay for it, activate it yourself. And so it does seem like consumers perhaps are not to downplay the in-store experience, obviously, because that is still important for a lot of people. But uh, some consumers are getting used to perhaps self-provisioning or self-care where, you know, they don't need necessarily someone to tell them, you know, what they need to do. Uh, they almost seem happier just to be able to do something by themselves, go do it, activate it on their own time, whatever it is. Uh, and so that's kind of an interesting uh, dynamic as well. It seems to be happening a bit in the marketplace too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I think, I think also in terms of the, the drivers of this, and I just, I, I did listen to um, one thing that you talked to with Sprint about their um, investment they're putting into the network. One of the things that is most likely to cause switching behavior still is true is the fact that there are drop calls, internet connectivity issues, speed of internet, the infrastructure itself is still really, really important. Now that is where the um, non-contract providers may have more difficulty, right? So um, just as an example, I live in the country. I have a very, very, very good um, full service provider, but there are many days where I can't get service out there or I'm driving along on that important conversation that obviously hands-free conversation that I'm doing in the car and it drops. So that is still one of the number one drivers of loyalty and non-switching behavior. But the other thing that I think the wireless providers should be aware of is one in four customers said in their last experience in the store, they had a bad experience, one in four. So that means a couple thousand people in this study said, it was not a great experience. And we're not asking for a top box experience. These are people who gave a one, two, or three on a five point scale. It really was not good. And what they're looking for is um, a sense that that wireless provider values their business and is listening to them when they say, this is the type of customer I am, I am and they're recommending good products and services. Um, quick example, um, I travel internationally. And I managed to work with the salesperson who sold me a phone that was not globally enabled. <laughs> and, globally enabled. and you get to Europe and you're kind of like, wow, this is a really bad experience. So those are some of the, I, I have um, a lot of empathy for the wireless providers because they have to know an awful lot of stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it does seem like it's a tricky business because I know operators, when I talk to them, they do like to talk up their, their retail channels and how great they are. And they put a lot of effort into these things. But like you said, I mean, we all know from going into stores for, uh, on occasion and we hear conversations either with, you know, between ourselves and a sales rep or even other conversations going on that sometimes the, that, that interaction is not uh, ideal. And it's so it's like, you know, you get the, the one side where the operators uh, are very voice, you know, talking a lot about how great their services are. But we know in the real world, that's a bit of a challenge. I know for operators, again, you know, a lot of the salespeople, uh, you know, it might not be a full-time uh, career for a lot of these people. And so training is always a challenge. And, uh, but like, like your survey shows, that's an important aspect of the whole overall consumer experience is having a great interaction with the, with the carrier at, at the sales uh, point. And that's kind of almost their first interaction really with the carrier. And so if that goes wrong, like you said, if you get a phone that doesn't work internationally and you travel internationally, 
uh, that could make it a damage a relationship uh, long term. Absolutely. And the other thing I think is really interesting from the research, and um, we've talked a little bit about the selling strategy for the sales associate. The other thing that's very important to know that is a finding we've seen several times is that the sales associate, if you're getting a contract in a full service provider for the first time, they should walk through your first time bill. And often there will be startup fees that are startling, $800,000. And it can catch the consumer by surprise. And we've actually been able to show that if that sales associate, if the store itself, um, as assessed through customer surveys, mystery shops, other things, if they are not good at walking through that first bill, they have a much higher churn rate in first 30 days because the clients come in and turn off and say, I can't possibly afford this. I bought the wrong contract. Or worse yet, I just put a down payment on my mortgage on my first <laughs> trying to get all these services started right and that's startling for them it's really difficult so that's another place where the sales associate um, especially the full service model pays an absolutely key role to um, retention and you know that everybody I, I you know they're fighting for market share you're really stealing share from one another you're not creating new share um, certainly new phones might uh, new data services, but when you're stealing that market share, they're all looking at churn rates that are one and a half percent, 1.6, 1.4, 1 somewhere in there, and that salesperson is key to that churn rate. Yeah, interesting. And I thought also from the survey too, like you kind of mentioned a little earlier on the on the prepaid or non-contract side, uh, Consumer Cellular did really well, and they're a, a company that uh, runs on Verizon's network, I believe, uh, and also doesn't really have a, a retail presence per se. Uh, they are mostly online. I think they do have some retail channels here and there, but they, they go through a different kind of uh, marketing plan and a different kind of distribution plan uh, with their service. But it seems to, as your report shows, uh, whatever they're doing, they seem to be doing it right because they are really connecting with their customers. It seems like they're really taking the time that when a customer does come, uh, that they're explaining a lot of stuff to them. Again, they're not a, a, a huge company with, with millions of customers, but the ones that they do have, they seem to really uh, do a really good job of, of explaining things to them and keeping those customers over a longer period of time, which uh, again shows up pretty well in, in, in your service. So it's interesting to kind of see how some of those prepaid companies who might not be as large uh, seem to be doing the right things uh, in the marketplace. Well, I think you hit on a key point. They're leveraging a really, really strong network through Verizon. And that is, remember, the first yeah. issue, in, um, switching cost issue is around network coverage. So they're leveraging that, but in the research, it also shows that they are very focused on customer service. So that sales rep, um, the ability to take care of problems, that's another thing that comes up in the research is if I have a problem and I ask you to solve it for me, are you able to? And if you do solve it, do I feel like an advocate for the brand because you did it so well? The other thing that we see and I thought was surprising in the research is the idea of multi-channel touch points. So um, I'm just back from the big Forrester CX conference and they talked a lot about the customer journey and actually Vicki Jones from AT&T did a big presentation on AT&T's investment in that customer journey. But when you think about, I can be touched at the contact center, I can call into the website uh, or look at the website, I can um, be working with the person who's supposed to give me my phone back when I lost it, um, and I can also go into the store. There's lots of places to be touched. And so um, some of these providers with maybe simpler models are able to do that very, very well. They're just not so big. Yeah, and then maybe that's, I guess that helps a little bit. Obviously, when you've got such a large scale and you've got you know tens of millions or even 100 million customers to deal with, obviously there's a greater chance for people to slip through the cracks uh, but again, they also have the resources that they should be able to uh, seal up those cracks to an extent as well. I mean, they, these are multi-billion dollar companies and they obviously they do realize the importance of this customer interaction. So uh, that is kind of the trade-off you, you see in the market is, you know, it is tricky to, solve, to serve all those customers, but when you have the resources, you should be able to find a way uh, to make all that work uh, efficiently for everybody involved. Because again, like you said, it's a very uh, competitive market and you're still in customers from from your rivals whenever you can. So uh, that's, a, that's a pretty important part of, of the market today, it seems. Well, to give you some scope of that, when Vicki Jones talked, AT&T is integrating Fortune, three Fortune 30 companies, one of which is DirecTV with their mobility platform. They have set aside over a billion dollars. This was a public talk, so I can share those numbers with you. <laughs> over a billion dollars for customer experience alone. 
and their mantra will be an effortless customer experience. And they're very aware of how when you are integrating these large companies, they have different um, infrastructure, they have different ways of dealing with customers, and they want one way, the AT&T way. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they pull it off. It's uh, about as large an initiative as I could possibly imagine. Yeah, you're right. I mean, AT&T, obviously, they've got a lot going on internally there with the integration of DirecTV. And uh, most of the operators are you know, always working through things like that, too. But you're right, that's going to be a huge uh, 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 challenge for them because they do have, you know, a lot of direct TV customers are trying to bring on board and uh, there's a big companies and a lot of money is spent there. So yeah, that'll be interesting to watch how that plays out. So, well, I guess maybe some takeaways from the report, I guess maybe from a consumer's point of view, what would you say is maybe the, you know, the biggest one or two takeaways that if a consumer comes across this and sees some of the numbers there, what should they take away from all the numbers that are involved in all of this? I would say that if um, you were to look at the numbers, you would walk away understanding that non-contract is a really big deal, as I talked about, because of the flexibility and the choice. The second thing is the investment that these companies make in their sales associates. It's absolutely critical because it poises the consumer for success. I bought the right phone. You helped me set it up correctly, which is a really big deal. Um, looking at you know my Gmail or my inter, uh, my VPN uh, work email, all of those things are actually working. The third thing would be that I've talked to the bill and I've been honest and transparent in the fees that you're going to pay, and I clearly understand the way that this works. And then finally, um, we see what we call the sales efficacy model. So you can look at sales folks who ask needs-based questions. They make good recommendations on those needs, and they close the sale. Sounds simple. You would be wildly surprised, perhaps, by how hard that can be. When um, you're very pressured, um, there's a line that's 45 minutes long, you're sitting on that pad, collected as one of the people that needs to be addressed, and the person in front of you um, basically doesn't know the difference between an iPhone and a, an Android. You're, you know, you're gonna spend a lot of time with that person. So those are some things for them to think about is that service model and then also the importance of the omni-channel. If I call the contact center, I look at the web, I come to the store, I see, hear, touch, feel the brand, the same information, and there's no cross-channel conflict. Interesting. Yeah, I guess you're right. We probably should give some of the uh, retail people a little bit of a break at times because you're right. They are under a difficult situation. There's uh, sometimes, you know, a lot of customers and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, we should definitely give them a break. But, uh, but I guess, so then I guess looking a bit then, I guess from a carrier's perspective, as carrier looks at these numbers, uh, what should they, what should be their, I guess, greatest takeaways? Obviously, I know we talked a bit about the churn issue, but what do you see as being uh, one of the biggest takeaways, some of the biggest takeaways for, for a wireless carrier looking at the numbers? Um, I would say with the churn, there becomes a frustration. So somewhere between uh, 10 and 15% of all consumers in our research were saying, I'm thinking about leaving my current provider. Now, we, we don't know who they're going to go to. Um, we can see movement, you know, some people from Verizon say, I'm thinking about AT&T. Some people from AT&T say, say, I'm thinking about Verizon. If you're a full service provider, there's not a whole lot of choice, right? There's four companies you can choose from. But we do see that the major pieces around churn compression are any issues where they got caught with surprise on billing, and the other thing is absolutely connectivity. That's the basic core service. And so if I can't get, if I have dropped calls, I have slow data, or I can't get con connectivity at all, um, I'm much more likely to switch. Yeah, good points, good points. And obviously, I mean, even if a carrier has, has a sub 1% churn rate, which uh, in the industry is considered, you know, very, really, really good, you're still looking at almost 12% of your customer base basically leaving each month. I mean, obviously leaving. And then, you know, the potential customers are, you know, that are looking to churn uh, raises that even higher. So even if you are somehow great in all of these marks, you're still going to lose some customers, but it's just a matter of, uh, I guess, reducing that window as much as possible uh, in the market that kind of keep as many as you can. Yeah, and there's a subtlety here that everyone needs to be aware about. Um, there is a certain amount of pain in the industry. One in four consumers said, I don't like my current provider. They're limited by choice. Yeah. So and you have a number of people say, I'm going to switch. And, you know, a person reading the report at one of the um, Verizon or AT&T or whomever could look at it and say, nah, all these people aren't going to switch. Well, partly it's because it's painful to switch. Can you imagine what it's like to actually switch your contract, switch your phone, switch your SIM, all that data that's held in various places? It's hard yeah. to switch. But 
if somebody comes in with something disruptive, just like AT&T did with an exclusive contract with the iPhone, you're setting yourself up for a lot of people who are in pain, but have stayed with you because it's too hard to switch, switching when that disruptive force comes in. And I think that's a little bit of what's happening with the non-contract service providers and what T-Mobile did first to market with that as a full service provider. <clears throat> Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I remember covering uh, when, uh, when local number portability first was enacted in the wireless space back in 2003, 2004, that was seen as a big driver because customers could switch operators and keep their number, which, you know, prior to that they couldn't do, which seems unheard of today, but there was a time when if you wanted to switch, you couldn't take your number. Uh, but yeah, but right nowadays, I know operators are trying to be more aggressive and making that easier, but it's still a challenge. I mean, you still have to kind of go to the store and swap out phones and there's still a lot involved there to, to do. So uh, again, it's getting easier, but it's still uh, a bit of a hindrance. And so I guess that's something for operators to look at as well. But, uh, but I guess then maybe, you know, uh, as you guys look forward for your company yourself, but what's, you know, are you, are you doing these kind of reports on an annual basis? What's, I guess, what can we expect next from, from a market force? We benchmark one industry per month. Okay. So the next report will come out next year about this time in the wireless industry. And next up, we'll be looking at um, the hospitality industry, so hotels, and banks, and um, also the fashion industry will be coming up soon. So it's a, it's a lot of fun, and um, we do have a lot of material and information for wireless carriers about what to think about for their sales associates, that sales efficacy model, and how to be measuring, because it's really important that if you're running 4,000 stores, how do you know what's happening in those stores every day? And that's something that is just another um, wonderful problem that a company as large as these are get to focus on every day. That sounds like something I share. We definitely appreciate getting insight today. Obviously, a lot happening out there for you guys, and it's good that you guys are also dipping your toe a bit in the wireless space. It's good for us to cover. So we appreciate that uh, insight there as well. But, uh, but thanks again for so much for the time today, and hopefully we'll talk again soon. Well, thanks for watching this week's show, and make sure to check us out again next week when we're scheduled to speak with Intelligent about its carrier network performance rankings.